now let's go ahead and force our game to generate this uh, list of this um, hierarchy of classes that we just generated. Now because the backpack class is embedded in the player class and the item class is embedded in the backpack class, well, uh, all of those will be generated as soon as the player class is created. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go up into my game globals here and force that to generate a new instance of the player uh, when the game loads. So I'm going to come down here below tile defaults. I'm going to say um, setup player. And all I'm going to do is draw a new instance of our player class. Now remember when we call it a new player, it actually launches that new sub as soon as it's created. Uh, so we'll say public shared, I'm um, going to call it player1 as new player. There you go. So we, we create a shared instance that is used throughout the entire um, game structure and uh, we can utilize it and update it accordingly as desired. Okay, so that was simple enough. Um, what next? Well, we are going to have to actually uh, create an inventory class to manage the uh, screen. So uh, it can be drawn to the world while we're playing. What I'd like to do is, is make it so we press the I button on our keyboard and it brings up our inventory window. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, let's go ahead and go down in our Solution Explorer to the Screen Manager class and the Screens folder. And I'm going to create a subfolder under Screens to handle uh, inventory. So I'm going to say New Folder inventory. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Inventory. Make sure I spell that right. And inside here I'm going to create an inventory class. <clears throat> Alright, now this guy this is where the meat and potatoes are. This is where it's where it's all happening. It's going to be pretty big. Um, what we're going to have to do first off is inherit uh, from our base screen. This is a screen that will be handled by our screen manager class. We learned this in uh, old uh, tutorials. If you haven't seen Adventures in XNA, you might want to go back and at least watch the screen manager uh, development. All of this has been created in uh, previous tutorials, so it might, might not hurt to go back and... Uh, view those as a reference if you're not familiar with how we're creating our X and A game here. So otherwise I say let's well cat's playing the keyboard again. Uh, I'm gonna say inherits base screen. Alright, that creates a screen for us. And we're gonna have to track the size and location. So I'm gonna say size and location of screen. And first off, we will track the width and height. So I'll say public width wood <laughs> as <clears throat> excuse me integer and public height as integer. And then we want to track the uh, screen position. Uh, this screen is going to be laying over top of our actual game window at some desired coordinate, so we're going to have to store sort of a, you know, subcoordinates for the screen itself. And what I'm doing is drawing that, if you recall, directly to the very center of the game screen. So uh, you can certainly change that if you, you know, you can even, if you uh, have the ability, you can make it so you can move it around with your mouse and stuff. Um, I'm certainly not going to be covering that in this tutorial, but just because it would take a lot of time. So I'm going to say public uh, position y as integer and public 
position x as integer. And OK, so well, that's pretty simple. We uh, have something to store our coordinates and size. So uh, now we need to know how many inventory slots we have. So I'm going to say uh, inventory slots. And we will do public menu x as integer. Um, now, for our actual inventory screen, if you recall, I had that set up in uh, two rows of items. Uh, so I'm not creating just a list, uh, you know, a straight top to bottom one dimensional list. I'm going to create a um, you know, a two-dimensional array that uh, can essentially go out as far and down as far as we uh, want to. And that'll also give us the ability to cycle through the items with our movement keys, uh, whether those be WASD or your arrows or something else of your choosing. Um, so I'll say public menu Y as integer. Uh, so that uh, we'll track our inventory slot information and now we need the selection indexes to track which items have been selected. Uh, we will say select no, selection indexes or indices indices oh, whatever you know. Uh, public select x as integer very simple public select a Y as integer and those will allow us to track any given index value in our um, 2D array. My cat is not a very good musician. So now the only thing that's left as far as variables are concerned is to create the array itself. So I'm going to say, whoops, I did not want a semicolon item list and this is just going to be public items and I'm going to create a two-dimensional array uh, specifying a um, an X and Y parameter and I'm just setting those to zero zero uh, because we're gonna end up having to redim it uh, regenerate that array size in uh, when when the class is actually created with our new sub. So that will be the next step.